Okay. Now I'm going to switch over to my web browser now. And as Roxy introduced uh, CJ, our technical solutions engineer, and for the purposes of our demo today, I'm actually going to optimize uh, CJ's website. Uh, so if you see on my screen now, I've loaded CJ's website, and we can see that the performance of CJ's website is absolutely terrible. It has a load time of six seconds, and when we look at what's in this page, it's actually really simple. But um, what's interesting here is um, there is a there is an image here called Jerry One um, from his awesome Tom and Jerry pictures here, but it's actually taking a few seconds to load those images. Now, images should generally be delivered very quickly. Um, now, this website is actually pointed at at the developer pop on my computer. Um, so when I browse this website now, I'm actually seeing the traffic flow through the developer pointer presence and Varnish is in place and Varnish isn't doing anything. Varnish should be making this fast. But the, uh, when you install Varnish yourself, you actually need to go and uh, configure it so that it can actually do some caching. Um, so let's have a look at one of these really slow images here and in, let's check out why it took almost two seconds for this Jerry one JPEG to load. Now we can see here Varnish obeys the default behavior of HTTP and in, uh, in CJ's website is actually sending an instruction here which says cache control max age zero, which actually says to Varnish, you are not allowed to cache this page. It says the maximum time that Varnish is allowed to keep it inside its cache is zero seconds. So Varnish receives it. It says zero seconds is way too, uh, it has already passed. So I'm just gonna throw it out of the cache straight away. Now we could fix this in two ways. Uh, we could log on to CJ's web server and actually adjust his web server settings so that his web server was saying max age 10 and then Varnish would cache it for 10 seconds. But what we can actually do here is say let's leave CJ's web server alone and let's write some VCL code to, um, to adjust the TTL here. So we can actually override this behavior without touching the web server. Um, so I'm gonna jump over now to my uh, favorite text editor and um, show you some VCL code. Now what you're seeing on screen right now is the boilerplate code that um, Varnish loads up uh, when you install Varnish. And you can see there are a bunch of functions here, but there are, there's actually no logic in them. They're all commented out. But um, as the request moves through Varnish, the browser makes the request to Varnish and then Varnish needs to go and fetch it from the web server. So what we're going to do here, <coughs> pardon me, is when the back end, i.e. the web application responds, what we want to say is if the web server responds, for a request for a JPEG file, <coughs> let's, um, let's override that TTL zero. So I'm, now I'm gonna write a little bit of VCL code and load it into the developer pop, and then we'll see some, um, we'll start to see some uh, performance improvements. What we're gonna say is if <coughs> the backend request URL contains JPG, then set the backend response TTL to 3600 3, seconds. So if, if the request contains JPG, 
CJ's web server is going to respond with max age zero. But when Varnish gets this backend response, it's going to say, I know you, I know you said don't cache it at all, but I'm, I'm going to ignore what you said, and I'm going to cache this for an hour, 3,600 seconds. So let's save that now, and we'll use um, our, uh, use my uh, Git tooling to load that change into the developer pod. And I'm going to push that change into the developer pop now. And now let's go back to CJ's website and see what's happened. Now I'm going to load the page again and I'm expecting it to be slow because Varnish doesn't have it in its case yet. But now when I make a second request, we should see that these JPEG files actually improve in performance. And they have, they've gone from two seconds down to around 20 milliseconds. And you can see <clears throat> Varnish has now had this JPEG file in its cache for 13 seconds. If I refresh again, Now we're up to 35 seconds. So now we can see for how long has that been in cache. But um, we've improved the load time of CJ's website by almost 50% here just by doing uh, some very uh, elementary VCL programming. We've gone from six seconds down to about three seconds. But there's still problems in here. We've got um, uh, some really slow fonts. And I think the CSS files are also slow. So let's go and make some more adjustments to get these uh, files cached. Let's jump back over to uh, my text editor and say, let's match on more than just JPEG. What we're gonna do is let's match on JPEG or CSS. And let's save that. And we use Git to load that into Varnish. Uh, loading VCL into Varnish uh, using Git is a feature of the Section IO developer pop. Uh, if you were doing this on a server you'd set up yourself, you might actually be logged into the server and writing the code or you might follow some of your standard deployment mechanisms for getting a, uh, this code file onto the server. So I'm going to push that into the point of presence now. And let's go back and load, uh, load CJ's website and we'll see some improvement on the CSS files here. Now again, we didn't see the performance um, uh, improvement on the first request because it wasn't in the cache, but now Varnish has uh, taken the updated code that I wrote, and now when I refresh, we still have a slow HTML document time, but now we have fast CSS files. 